Okay, ready? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Station Break Podcast. Every Friday here at KGW in Portland, Oregon, we give you a behind-the-scenes look with somebody involved in our world of television. My name is Cassidy Quinn. I'm your host, and today we have the wonderful Skylar Stever, the first person from our marketing team. Your right. title is, I want to make sure I get it right, right. Senior Producer right. and Production Manager, which you just told me is on your business card. Yes. Mine, I get one word. I get reporter. One word on my <laughs> business card, and then you get this whole fancy thing. What does it actually mean? Uh, well, you know, I just oversee the project management of the different projects that are going on. So anywhere from commercial work to promotions or... Uh, whatever's happening with the schedule, so the boring side. And then also, you know, making sure that, you know, we do creative work for the news team and for our clients, like uh, commercial clients, stuff like that. How long have you been at KGW? Uh, 15 years this year. Wow. Yeah, I know. I get a lot a lot. That's cool. I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have weird random jobs before getting into TV? Oh, uh, well, I mean, depends on what you say is weird and random. I install pools. Above oh. ground pool with my uncles in New York. I pumped gas and waited tables. I think that anybody that's in uh, media probably has waited tables at some point in their career. Yeah. Mm. Did you like waiting tables? Uh, it was fine. I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> you know, I think that's, you know, uh, it taught me a lot about working with the newsroom, you know, <laughs> juggling a lot of different personalities and getting all things done. So, yeah, I think that some of that was good, but uh, no, I didn't like it. <laughs> do you now have a new respect when you go out to dinner or something? You absolutely, know? yes, yeah. absolutely. I give the I give a lot of um, like uh, what do you call it grace to people that are waiting on the tables. I count. I was like, they're working on eight people. Let's let's relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. you ever been fired? I have been actually. Yeah. Oh. I know, right? Uh, I didn't think it was deserved. Uh, I worked as a, as a, as a at a lot attendant. You know, where you're, you're washing cars. Oh. And we had this room where you take the cars in to be washed, right? And I looked up one day and I saw that somebody had uh, previously thrown razor blades in the ceiling. It was like an old, you know, junky garage, you know. So somebody was like messing around with their old razor blades that you used to peel off tar from the cars. So I took a razor blade, I threw it up, and then I got fired for that. What? <laughs> that Even was though it. there were a bunch of them already yes, there? Yes, yes. Yeah. How rude. How old were you? Ooh, 18 or 19. Ah. Yeah, it was young. It was not career ruining. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> they come back to haunt me. <laughs> yes. So you actually were just out on the shoot for KGW. What was, was that one? I was on for, it was uh, Stepping Up for Education. It's a partnership with On Point. I was out. Uh, they're highlighting a program called Playworks. So Playworks uh, is a program that uh, takes recess and designs it to... Um, highlight, I don't know, designs it for everybody to, uh, how do I say it? Uh, so the, the fun things that they're doing, they don't know that they're learning. Ah. So they're designing play to help in the classroom, essentially, is what it is. And fun. On Point underwrites this to bring lift to organizations like Playworks, or they've done um, a couple other different things that are education-based. So they underwrite that, they give them, you know, like lift. And uh, so it's actually a pretty neat program. It was actually pretty fun. It had 80 kids just oh. running around. It was chaos. It was like a little bit, uh, you know, it was hard to direct in that environment. With kids going everywhere. And, uh, How yeah. old are these kids? Anywhere from, uh, I think it was second grade to sixth grade. So it was just like wow. craziness. It was That's a lot of children. Were they just screaming the whole time? Yes, <laughs> they were. <laughs> My photographer looked at me a couple times and was like, <sighs> I'm like, just, just keep rolling. <laughs> how many of you are there on those shoots? Are you a photographer? Depends on the how big it is, but usually it's just a photographer and me. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we'll do a shoot that's more, like we did this shoot with the morning team where they're bouncing on a trampoline, so yes. we had our whole... I was just watching there. that one today, and the video for that is stuck in, or the music is stuck in my head currently. Right, <laughs> yeah. So that will have more people, you okay. know, the whole team. I mean, that was designed by our whole team, so we all came together to shoot that one. So the promo you're shooting today, how does that end up? How does it manifest itself? Does it go on TV? Is it going on mm -hmm. line? Both. That one will be, I think, post. I'll edit it next 
week or tomorrow. I'm not sure what the timeline is on that. And then it'll go on television, and then it'll also post online. Oh. Yeah. And a lot of people probably see the promos that you do on Facebook mm -hmm. or yeah. on TV every day, but they probably don't actually know where they're coming from. So what kind of things do you make that people wouldn't know? Uh, well, I make all the station initiatives. So that would be like toy drive, food drive, supply drive. So all those campaigns, I work with the partners to develop the strategy to how they're going to look. Is that mm -hmm. cumbersome enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> so a anytime a client comes in, and a lot of things that I do are kind of cross-platform, so there'll be sales will have initiatives in them, and then also marketing. What we do will have what we're going to do for, like, the food drive, but then, you know, you're, I'll work with the client to bring in and make sure it aligns with what we're doing, you know, in a, in a, for our let's take the food drive, you know, how that aligns with what they're doing, what we're doing, and, you know, also raising a lot of food, you know. I think they do like a million pounds of food. That's, you know, in 30 days, that's pretty amazing, you know. Yeah. Well, and it's amazing for the community, the good community that we live in. <laughs> yeah. So for something like the food drive, how many different pieces are you creating? 30 plus, yeah. Wow. yeah so uh, in that area with versions, you know, so you'll have the client side, and that'll be the... Uh, each one of the, it, it'll, they'll have pieces for that, and then we'll do stuff for the KGW side. So each one of those versions, it comes about about 30 plus spots that we'll create. Is it weird? Does it feel weird? Because, you know, for TV, the stuff I do is pretty much you're live and then it's over and you can't edit anything. Yeah. But then most of the stuff, at KGW at least, is packages that are produced the day of. Right. And then on your side of things, you have a week or however long. Right. Never stop thinking about it. Yeah. It's constantly, like I'm working on the school supply drive right now, concepting like, what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? How are we going to make the best of, uh, making sure that we get the best response from the community uh, and making sure that it aligns with everybody's objectives that are involved and, you know, dealing with multiple personalities, multiple departments, you'll always have uh, multiple expectations of how to deliver that. And what, if you're a really good producer, you're able to hit all of them. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's what a good producer can do. Plus, you know, you can hit your own. I mean, that, a good sign of a good producer is like they produce what the client wants, what they want, and then everybody else. Because that's where you get your own individual uh, perspective and story, is designing content that way. How long usually from beginning to end? So like, for example, the school supply drive, no one on television will probably see anything relating to that until August? Yeah, in that area. July, they'll see, like, the join a spot, and then in August, they'll start rolling out. Yeah, so it'll take me and our team. I shouldn't just say me. There's a team of people to do it. Um, you know, anywhere from two, what is that, like five or six shoots in the field, and then, you know, like 20-plus hours of editing, wow. stuff like that to kind of put it together. Then Jeff's time as our designer, all the design stuff he does. You know, it, it takes time. It's 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 a, but when it's done, it'll have like twenty plus spots for mm -hmm. that campaign. Wow. Now, do you still? I saw that you used to do a lot of short filmmaking. Do you still yeah. do that? Not as much. You know, I think that uh, I think that yeah, I would like to, but it's just about time and space, and you mm -hmm. know, having. A, family and kids and the full-time gig, it's Priorities, hard to do good. that. And, uh, you know, we, I, I do music videos with my cousin from time to time. You know, he has a side project that I've worked on over time, but... Your cousin's band is... My cousin band, he, he's Coheed. <laughs> yes, Coheed and Cambria. Coheed and Cambria <laughs> which is crazy. Like, they're a pretty big deal. Did you know who they were? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I had to go on their Twitter just to, I was like, I wonder what they're doing these days, because I feel like I've heard of them right. a while ago, but they have... I mean, over 100,000 Twitter followers and yeah. seem like they're doing cool things. No, he's the real deal. He's a rocker. <laughs> so you've made music videos with him? With his side project, not with Coheed. Uh, he has a side project where he does his, like, uh, he has, where he does his, uh, it's called Davenport, and I've done all his, um, most of it, most of his uh, music videos from there. And since he lives on the East Coast, a lot of it's like, our first thing that we did was really fun. We did, back when MySpace was the rage, right? Yes back in the day, where we, su we sub uh, asked for ki people, the kids from his band to sit in clips, and we made a whole video that was submitted from clips, and we'd give them things like Smash a Stereo, or, 
you know, do your own interpretation, you know, sing the song. And then I'd use all those things and make a music video out of it. That's cool. So that, all fan submitted mm -hmm. things. Yeah, except for like there's like two or three pieces that I shot to kind of bridge it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I considered myself a fan. <laughs> so sure, 100% fan. Yeah. Fan submitted. And that it was fun. I mean, that, that was challenging and fun at the same time just because of all the conversions that you have to do with the product that's sent in from, you know, we had people from Europe and Australia and all over the world that were sending stuff. And this was in MySpace. I mean, that nobody was doing stuff like that. Were there vertical vi videos? Because, or yeah. was that more once people had cell phones with cameras on them? <laughs> there was, but I blew it all up so you wouldn't know. So mm -hmm. it didn't, didn't, didn't really reflect that. No problem. Was it. And that piece actually went on to do, um, you know, like MTV picked it up, their MTVU and they put it through their system and it got voted into one of their things. It was a fun piece. That's awesome. So was it on MTV? MTVU, yeah. It was. It was in their commercial rotation. Very cool. Yeah. What other kinds of films did you use to make? Uh, I did, you know, uh, our first film was called How to Breathe. I co-directed that with a guy Noah. I used to work here. And, you know, we... This, this fun product. It was fun. It was fun to work on. It was, you know, it was like anything. It was a passion project. And we shot for over three days, and you know, ended up ended up making the circuit. I can't. It wasn't like the top tier circuit, but it was like mid level circuit. And you know, at then I didn't really understand it, so I didn't really participate in any of that stuff. <laughs> We'd get into these festivals, and I'd never go. Oh, <laughs> that's no fun. <laughs> what made you decide from there to want to get into making videos for TV? Uh, I was doing them both at the same time. Oh. Yeah, I've always kind of balanced both of those. I think I was a little bit more aggressive than, you know, trying to. And this, you know, and I've, I've gained more, a lot more responsibilities here. So I definitely feel a, a lot more, uh, at the end of the day, very spent. You know, like, the last thing I want to do is do, do creative stuff. Yes. So I just relax. I can understand how that goes. <laughs> I'm still at the point where I do want to do creative stuff outside of work. But then there's days where, I, like this morning, just slept in way too much. Didn't get the creative things I wanted to done. Uh, how is when you're creating something for TV versus making a short film mm -hmm. for a festival or online or wherever, what are the big differences? Well, when you do a short, uh, it's for yourself, you know, so you're designing something that you would want to watch. It, 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 uh, it, when, you, when you're working with a client, you're working with, whether it would be KGW's, the newsroom or anybody, you're working with a client and their needs come first. So you got to, I think you learn as a producer that... That, that you need to answer the client first. And I, I think when you're doing your independent projects, it's for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where your, that's where most of your growth can happen because you're allowing yourself to think a little bit. My microphone is falling down, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if you can hear it, but if you're watching, you're like, what is Cassidy doing? <laughs> sorry, that makes sense. I'm totally listening to you. <laughs> it must be different also, if you're doing a short film, you have actors, right? And oh, sure. then right. at KGW, you have... News anchors, reporters. Sure, right. Uh, yeah, and like it was it wasn't like I did a ton of it. You know what I mean? I mean so. Uh, yeah, I mean there's, and your different emotional things that you're trying to get from people, and you know with today's, what they call emotional marketing, they want more people, more authentic, tones and reads from your talent. So they are asked to be mm -hmm. a lot more like, we'll say do it again, but you know say it more conversational. And they'll be <laughs> like, what does that mean? And I'm like, then you have to kind of try to get them in the right headspace to say whatever line it is that they're trying to get them to say. And when you're working with actors, and the things that I've always done were more like, I, I knew I wasn't going to have the best acting talent. <laughs> or at times, you know, it's like whatever it was, except for our second one, we actually had some really good actors. Uh, you would just design it to be like, just walk over there, walk over there, pick this up, do this. You know what I mean? So it was really kind of choreographed uh, what we're doing. Meryl Streep wasn't making any appearances no, in no. your films? Not Dang. at all. Not at all. <laughs> Is it ever difficult when you have TV anchors or reporters who, yeah, are usually used to just reading news on television and everyone has fun personalities, but they're not necessarily used to expressing that? Sure. Uh, everybody now... No, the, the team that we have is amazing. I mean, they, they've, I've never had any personality. There's no egos here. You know, <laughs> you know, maybe some people with, like, not remembering that they're shooting today would be, like, the most conflict that you run into. But everybody that we work with as far as the news account is concerned is fine. No one yeah. has an ego.
Uh, so when you come into work, do you have a typical day or is it totally different depending whether... Depending on your day. Like yeah. this day, this next two weeks I'm writing a ton. So, um, and there's too much to do. So I'm getting here at like today I was here at six in the morning and I'll go home at six at night just trying to get all of it done. You know what I mean? Yeah. To, you're got to get it out. And writing's hard. Everything that's great is made good in writing. It's writing. That's, that's the hardest thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then producing it, putting the pieces together is, uh, and you know, we don't have like budgets, so it is, you know, it's friends and phone calls, you know, they are corporations or how are you put together. If you want to put, if you write, you know, guy holding cat, you know, <laughs> you're going to have to get a guy and you're going to have to get a cat. <laughs> so anything that you write, you have to get. And that can make it really complicated, especially if you get married to like a vision. Like, I want to make this happen. This is going to be amazing. And then you're like, oh, man, I got to get a guy walking on a moon. <laughs> but it's going to be worth it. We're totally going to do it. And then, you know, you go try to put it together. Yeah. How, who are all these people? Like, when you see, uh, let's see, for one of the, I think the food drive, there was were people riding on a bike or something? Oh, that was a toy drive, right? Toy drive. So right. were those people that you knew, or did you go out in the street and say, hey, sir, can we film you riding your bike, please? Seriously, right? <laughs> now, well, the, the CEO for Regents was in that spot, and so they'll supply all their principal people that are going to be on camera. Ah. So you, you use, the they use the corporation that you're working with and be like, oh, great, this is great. You like it? Good, because what we're going to need from you is about <laughs> 20 people. <laughs> and people probably like being on TV. For the most part, you know, I... I think they like it if it's more sudden. Some people are like sudden, like, I didn't know I was going to be on TV. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you're going to love it. Let's do this. <laughs> and then Not some too people much time need, to think about like, it. Yeah, they need, you know, prepping. Now they're going to be, how am I going to be portrayed? Am I going to look fat? I get that mm -hmm. all the time. I'm like, oh, no. Our cameras are all very slimming. They're very slimming. They'll look great. <laughs> right. <laughs> what about, there's a promo that I think is on TV right now uh, that I like of all the different reactions on Facebook, and so there's somebody holding up like oh, a right, heart emoji, right. and somebody's mm -hmm. holding up right. a crying emoji, right. or a set, or a happy emoji, or something. Are those all people that you picked beforehand? Or? Those are people that I ran into on the street. And was ah, like, okay. Or, well, that Ellen produced that, so what, what I did is I went out with her, and then we both kind of come up to people and say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> And it's, you know, what emotion are you feeling right, today? Right, right. Do you want to be on TV? And the funny thing is, like, a lot of the people that run into downtown are from out of state. You know, or <laughs> they like have Canada, no idea right? where you are. Like, all right, you're from Canada? Perfect. You love this town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I think is the hardest part of my job. One of the hardest parts is finding random people mm -hmm. to talk to. Like, yesterday, uh, Art Edwards is our sports guy, sports reporter, anchor. And we were down at the Blazers game for game four, which they unfortunately lost, which by the time anyone listens right. to this podcast, That's they will terrible. know that, unfortunately. Uh, but we were there during our four o'clock, not really talking to fans. We were talking to a chef at the Moda Center. But then for five o'clock, Art wanted us to ask a couple people their reactions to how they felt about Steph Curry possibly playing, which as we know, he did play last night. He played yes. a lot and he played very well. Killed us. Right. Uh, it's terrible. But so we were just trying to go up to a few random people in Blazers gear, like, hey, do you want to be on TV and talk about <laughs> Steph Curry? That's what and I did. And right. it's always trying to figure out, I think, the shortest way to ask somebody, like, because I can never figure out. It's like, hey, we're trying to find a couple people to ask about how Steph Curry might play tonight. Are you interested? And by then they're like tuned out. They're, they're gone. already right. walking away Absolutely. from you. You're like, how do I get to the point and just. I don't know. That's I, always, I always have a thing where it's like I lead with like who I am. Mm -hmm. So yeah. establish credibility. Yes. Hi, I'm from KGW. Well, and I usually have the microphone. <laughs> right. So it's like, hi, I'm from KGW, in right. case you couldn't tell because right. it says KGW. We did it one time where we went out. We were trying to get reactions from people, and I didn't have any KGW gear, and we got zero people. And then I was like, all right, that's a bust. So the next <laughs> people time. People just think you're no. some dude with a camera. Yeah, right. They're like, no, you're a stalker. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's not working. So the next time I had like a hat on and the, the gear and I'm like, credibility. The yellow jacket. <laughs> the yellow jacket, right. I barely ever wear my yellow jacket, but it is true. It does, <laughs> it makes it very obvious that you work at KGW. It's like, it's like wearing a cone. <laughs> uh, one of the promos that I remember from a, probably a year ago at this point, maybe, had Chief Meteorologist Matt Zafino. Okay. And there was water. Right, yeah. Somehow. Mm -hmm getting all over him in this right. promo. And so he's just getting soaked. Yep. How 
I just wanted to know what that looks like from the other, from behind the camera. Sure. Are you guys throwing water yeah. at him? Randy and I <laughs> throwing buckets of water at, at Matt. You know, it's funny because like all the people that you saw in that spot were somehow like worked here. I mean, that's basically how we set that up. Uh -huh. And uh, I specifically sought out people that I'm like, oh my goodness, yes, you've driven me crazy over the years. Can I throw water <laughs> on you? <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and they said yes. And I was like, it was, it was very like therapeutic and fun at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> And Matt was great. I mean, that was a little Willamette water that he got thrown at him, and he reminds so me about that. So clean and delicious. Oh, it was absolutely. And we're talking about doing something like that for our Olympic promos. Um, about uh, there's a concept that we're working on. It involves people jumping in the water and stuff like that. That sounds fun. It, it, yeah. It's in the summertime. Like today would be okay. It's pretty nice out. Yeah, yeah. And he did. It was a cloudy day too. That's what Matt did. That was fun. That was actually fun because he's 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 ditched he's forgotten about shoots so I was like forget about me again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, is that a huge thing coming up? Obviously, it's the Olympics, but from your perspective, right. are there a lot of things to produce yes, before then? Yes, absolutely, there are. Yep, high pro high pressure. Come up with great ideas and execute well. Wow, because if you didn't know, we will have the Olympics yep. on KGW. Steph will be there. So are you producing things with her beforehand too? Yes, we'll produce, like we have, I think we have, oh yeah, you know, should we talk about what we're doing? No, we have, it's we all have, secret. secret. I don't know, whatever you want to say. Secret plan. No, we have, I think we have like five or s like seven spots that we'll be rolling out. Some of them have integrated like social elements that kind of go, what we call 360 promotion, and which I call sticky, right? So you want to be able to share something. And so if that, uh, so it'll go from, um, an idea, you know, to writing it down, to, you know, making sure that it can go social, it can go on air, and it can even, the best ones, like we did this this and that camp campaign, mm -hmm. and uh, the best thing about that is that it was able to be shared inside a newscast. So now you had this really 360 product where it could go inside a newscast naturally, it could go online naturally, and it could go in the air naturally. And those are, that's, that to me is like what we should be doing. I like that type of promotion. Mm -hmm. um, and the best ones, it doesn't feel like it's promotion. That's that's good product. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems like you guys are getting more towards promos where you do show the personalities of all the on-air right. people yeah. here, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's absolutely by design. And yeah. then it's also things where all the on-air people, once they see the promo, will share it themselves to their right. pages absolutely. and get yeah. more views. and. Right. That's all by design, absolutely. Yeah, that is interesting. When you guys are coming with the up with the ideas for all these, are you more you know trying to think in your office by yourself and writing things no. down, and then you guys talk, or is it just team? A, it's yeah. a team that comes up with them. Absolutely. I think sometimes like you, you have different personalities, right? So I probably what, what you call the good in a room. Like I like to talk about things. I like to bounce ideas. I constantly have a conversation going about whatever product I'm working on. And I'm bouncing and looking for like reactions. It's like that working well for you? No, then I'll change it. Uh, some other people are just quiet. They sit down, they write it, and, and uh, but then they'll come to this point where they want to reflect and figure out if it's a good enough. Mm -hmm. And you know, I work well with like designing like um, well that looks great on the written pages. Of what's it going to look like? How are you going to shoot it? Where are you going to put the camera? Why is the camera going there? What's the tone going to feel like? Uh, what do you want the viewer to feel like? What do you want the memorable moment to be? Stuff like that. So that's what I do. Yeah. How many ideas just get shut down from the beginning? Oh, I don't know. A lot? <laughs> Depends on how beat down you get. <laughs> it can be definitely brutal. You would have to have a team that would get along really well, I would we think. We do. We have yeah. a great team upstairs, absolutely. You know, that bouncing trampoline was Randy's wife said, they should jump on a trampoline. Really? So it was like his wife came up with the idea, and then we were like, well, that would be a great idea. And what, what I would do is like, well, let's put design to it. Let's make sure it looks good. Um, you know, put it in a solid background so there's no, so it doesn't get, doesn't, you're not distracted. And then the team came up with like, we should throw stuff at them, you know, and throw pillows at them, stuff like that. And we're shooting all in slow-mo, great idea. And it was really, it was fun. You know, that was a, that was a fun campaign to produce. So you just brought a whole trampoline into the yes. studio? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And then what was that like, telling the anchors beforehand, hey, today you're going to show up and... <laughs> Make sure you wear something that doesn't right. fly no. up on a trampoline. Sunrise team, they, I mean, they got to hold them back. I mean, they liked it. They were there. You know, I was just, jealous, yeah. I will be honest. I was like, why am I not on the Sunrise team? I want to jump I on a trampoline at work. Background. Well, because I kept walking through the studio because 
uh, where I do my hair sometimes and makeup is in that little dressing room right, behind there. Right. And I was like, why is there a trampoline in here? This doesn't right. make any sense. And then I saw the promos and I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so they all enjoyed it. They were excited about the yeah, idea. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think Chris McGinnis was probably the most, it was like one of the most <laughs> athletic people, but he was actually the most imbalanced too. I, I really feared, like, I almost felt like, oh my goodness, is he going to get hurt because he jumped up? And I just wanted him to spin. It's like, jump up and spin. And he spun, and I was like, oh, he almost went off the, off the mat there. Oh, and I, were yeah. there any protective oh, padding no. on the floor no, we around? live on the, on the edge here. <laughs> yes, absolutely on the edge. As long as everyone has health insurance. <laughs> wow. It, it was fun. I pro that was a fun shoot to do. And what I liked about it is it had a lot of different... Um, what I love is collaboration, being able mm -hmm. to collaborate with different people in our department and, you know, seeing something that, you know, you believe in come, come to light and then, you know, picking the right music and all that kind of stuff. And then it just supercharges it, you know, as, mm -hmm. uh, as ideas go. Yeah, music would probably be very, you, I'm sure you have to find, is it non-copyright We have, music? Uh, we work with like two different, um, I think we have, two, we have mega tracks. No, no, no. We don't have mega tracks anymore. We have killer tracks, and I can't remember this other one. They and it's just a whole music library. So we have two music libraries that we that we use. So do you edit the whole thing, and then you're sitting there thinking, okay, now what are we gonna? What kind of music are we gonna put in there? Uh, I usually it depends on this piece, but I will usually find the music first because mm -hmm. like I don't I like that. I mean that sets the tone of like your edit and. It sets the tone for like even yourself mentally. Like when I'm writing, I'll find music that I want to write to or get the tone right, hmm. so that you know. Like, at least for me, I mean, everybody does it differently, but I'll, I mean, I have I write in my edit bay so I can close the door, turn the music up, up, and get get a tone that feels right for the piece. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to write, you know, some serious thing, and you're, you know, you're talking about something happy. You know, you want yeah. to. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I do. Interesting. Have you ever, on purpose or on accident, ended up in a promo? Uh, yeah, I, I was the voice in this or that. You know, oh, that was yeah. me. So mm -hmm. I was, and then there was a piece with Drew I did where I, I handed him a microphone. That's about it, though. I mean, I don't... So just a hand model? I, I, when, I was, uh, I was at, uh, when I first got here, uh, they did a promo one time, and I was in it because they needed extras, and they're desperate. <laughs> And they had me uh, be like like some guy that wore like a hard hat, and I have a huge head, and it looked ridiculous. <laughs> and I was like, that's terrible. And I was like, I think that's the end of my television on camera <laughs> career, because I looked just ridiculous. I'm sure it looked great. I'm going to go find that one. Was that when Drew was moving back to the mornings and no, was that falling was through the, the ceiling No, that was way or before that. Oh. That was like back in like 2002, one. Wow. So I don't think you'll find it. It's gone. It's not on the internet. <laughs> Dang it. Do you have any other favorite promos that you have fun stories from? I love all my children. <laughs> good. That's a good way to start. Now that we've gotten that out of the way. Uh, I don't know. I'm like in the moment. Like I really liked what we do for, I like what we did for the food drive last time. I thought it was really effective. I thought we had like a good emotional hook. You know, anytime that you take a stat and you can flip it into a, um, a visual thing that represents it and people kind of get it without saying you know this is what this is and that was the one with the chairs yeah right so yeah. it was like one in five yeah one in five go hungry so we took uh five chairs and painted one of them blue to represent the stat and then you know we had people sit just in the blue chair uh through the piece and i think it came together quite nicely i, I liked it as the piece goes and you know for what i do now i i you learn as you go you never you know you never know you never know enough in this business. You always feel like you always got to constantly learn and develop your own voice as a writer or, or as a director. And with that piece, I was able to kind of figure out a new way to tell the same story because I do a lot of that. Like, I'm going to work on school supply again. Okay, well, it's mm -hmm. the same problem, you know, so how do you rewrap it? And that taught me a lot about how to visualize statistics in a way that I hadn't done before. And, and with this school supply drive coming up, I'm trying to utilize some of those same tactics, but tactics, but switch it, you know. So you're constantly changing, you're constantly pushing uh, visually and, you know, for storytelling and all that kind of stuff. How are you going to do that more, get to make it more effective? Mm-hmm. When you're out on these shoots, has anything ever gone horribly wrong? Constantly, yeah. <laughs> constantly? It's constantly, yeah. It, you know, shooting is, a, I, I mean, it's, you know, uh, even if the, as well-planned and as thorough as you can be, um, 
something will happen wrong, you know, whether it's a camera failing, batteries failing, we almost had a light fall on someone, you know, oh. it's always, there's always something that's going to go wrong. We've had clients blow up and get angry. I mean, it's, I mean, as a producer, your role is to act like it, it, nothing's happening. It's mm -hmm. the best experience of your life. You know, even internally, you may think, be thinking, you know, this is all falling apart, it's going to hell. But you, you constantly have to be like, this is amazing, this is the best piece I've worked on. And, you know, keep a light mood because everybody's reading you. You kind of set the tone for everybody's comfortable feeling. So if you come in stressed out, which most of the time I am in the van, but as soon as you leave the van, you know, you have to have a presence about yourself that sets the tone for everybody else. Now you know if you ever shoot something with Skylar and he says, this is the best promo ever, he means it. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. 110%. <laughs> uh, oh, where are you from originally? I didn't from, ask you Oh, that. my goodness. Small town called Trigo, Montana. Trigo, Montana. Yeah, I had uh, four people in my eighth grade class. It's How many? High, four. What? Four people. Were you making videos as a child? No. No, not at all. No, no, no. Did not. No. No, I didn't. I know I didn't know what I wanted to do for the longest time. Huh? When's the first time that you did make a video? Well, in college, you know, I, oh, I, we made these little videos in in school, in high school, where they were just like jokes, you know, or the teacher, the right English teacher, knew that we were just. I was kind of just a, yeah, no, wallpaper <laughs> is how I describe high school, and nobody really knew who I was. But like, what what we do is we we got this one class where the teacher kind of knew, kind of like, yeah, these. You know, so he'd let us go do what we wanted to do, and we made these really terrible, terrible short films in school <laughs> that were just bad. I can't even remember what they were, but I always was the instigator, you know, the idea guy. And I, I remember that as I got into college, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I don't know, something with television. Hmm. Something That's like. cool. Was Portland the first, was the first TV station that you've been at? Or uh, were you at other no, oh my Portland? goodness, I interned at COIN, you know, a long time ago. And then after that, I got a job at this television station called PAX. I don't know, PAX TV, you don't know what that is, but mm -mm. it was a startup that was here locally. And I was able to stay local without having to bump around markets. Like a lot of people that have been in this business know is that you have to go small and then you kind of work your way back to where you want to be. And I was able to stay small inside, you know, and make all my mistakes in this PAX television. And then PAX got bought by NBC and a oh, JSA, yeah. and they brought me over here. And then from there, I was um, brought over into what I do now. Interesting. Has your office always been upstairs? <laughs> yes. Because at KGW, yes. The, yes. we don't see the sales and marketing people no. a lot. For because, good reason. For good reason. <laughs> until they come down to right. the newsroom to do podcasts. <laughs> right. But they're all upstairs. We're right. all downstairs. You don't want to hang out with me. I'm a no. Very <laughs> no, of course we do. You guys just try to stay away from us. Anytime I go up there, I end up seeing like snacks on a table. So that's what they're hiding from us up there. Right. Lots of snacks. Or at the, uh, what do we do at Christmas? It was like a company Picnic. potluck. Yes, yes. So everyone was, each, I love that. each uh, department was supposed to have snacks and a yes. theme in their area. And the best ones were all upstairs. But a lot of people down here didn't make it up there because right. we don't even know. We don't know it exists. This mysterious right. land that nobody knows. Uh, you told me that your parents were hippies? Yeah, they were. Absolutely. 100%, 110. Were you a hippie child? I was, yeah. I grew up in a, uh, we had a, I was, we lived in a, t like when I was three or four, my dad was building a log cabin in Montana, and we, I mean, I spent the summer in a teepee. I mean, that's what we did. That's where we built the cabin. In an actual teepee? Yeah, we didn't have any, like, running water, or electricity, or wow. all that kind of jazz. Toilets, just normal things. <laughs> no toilets? No, no. Because three years old is when you're like supposed to be potty trained too, and right, they're just like, right. "We're taking no. the toilet away from you." <laughs> we had an outhouse, so that was as close as it came. Wow! Yeah. So now you must really appreciate. I mean, I'm assuming the you have a toilet thing, in your house right, now. Right? No, I, I got rid of it. No, it <laughs> still lives in a teepee. Just the hole. <laughs> no, uh, what we uh, what we do? Um, no, 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 it's just out in the middle of Montana. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, you said this in an email, so I want to make sure I understand it, <laughs> that your dad shot the yeah. television, not like in the way that you shoot television. No, he shot it with a gun. The in television? A good way. <laughs> right, no, and, and again, well, you know, when my parents split up at a young age, surprise, right? And um, he was moving, and he 
me and my sister were watching television and we were fighting over what to watch. Like I wanted to watch Dukes of Hazard, and she wanted to watch, you know, Days of Our Lives. And of at, course, well, at the end of the day, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the television was just on this crate and that was the only thing left. And we were like on the floor pulling each other hair, you know, stuff like that. And he comes in and goes, I'm shooting the TV. And he took it out. And, you know, my dad is not, or my dad was, he is not a man that has a gun. He's a hippie, you know, so it's very, I don't even know how he had it. That's what makes it funny. It's like, you, how he even had that, it doesn't make sense because he's like, Bob Dylan meets Mr. Rogers, you know what I mean? <laughs> so it's not like he's going to be carrying around a gun. And then he took it out and um, <laughs> shot it. <laughs> Loosely, like, well, he shot, he only had two bullets, so we knew that. <laughs> you know, so as kids, you're kind of like, oh, good, you know, you, and so he, he, and it was a big gun. It was like 44, like, you know, uh, 44 Magnum. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> and he shot and he missed the first time. This is true. So he missed the first time. And we were just ecstatic. You know, as kids, we started cheering. Like, it went from tears to joy. You we'll know? never fight again. Yeah, right. We'll never. And then he, um, like, he had a friend there that yelled, Ralph, plug it in. So we, that's when the kids started to get, that's when we got excited. So he ran an extension cord out and I plugged it in and he laid down. And I remember watching like, you know, Days of Our Lives, waiting for a commercial for him to shoot the television. Oh, he waited till the commercial? <laughs> he waited for a commercial and he shot. And I kid you not, he, he hit the television like, right? And it goes blank. And then there's this pause and it comes back on. And the che we cheered. All, all the kids were like, yay, all right, you know. And he didn't want the TV, you know, so he gave it to us. And my mom didn't have a TV at the time. And there was, like, this bullet hole underneath our television. And the television only worked if you plugged it in after that. <laughs> so people would come over and be like, what is that? And I'd be like, oh, what's what? And it's like, there's a bullet hole in your TV. And I'd be like, yeah, my dad shot the TV. <laughs> so where in the TV was this bullet hole? It's, like, right at the bottom. So not know, like, like a, in the screen, no, no, like, like where the right, buttons right, are? Like, yeah, it was like one of those old wood paneling things. So right at the very, right right underneath it, he shot it. He missed it. It was a big hole, big hole. And it just messed with the on-off. So you had to plug it in and unplug it. And that's how de dedicated to television I've been, right? I've always wanted to. Right. Yeah, I'm in it. It's like the ultimate rebellion. I was going to say, little did your dad know. He was just inspiring a whole right. career in television. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is funny. Does that TV still exist anywhere? Or a Not that I know of. I'd love to have it back, though. <laughs> Probably still works if you plug it in. Uh, speaking of children, segue. Mm -hmm. uh, you said you're working on children's books with I your did. mom. Yeah, my mom is an amazing artist. She has, uh, you know, she's just retired. She's an art teacher who just retired, and she's working on a book for Smart right now, where all the proceeds. I think they're partnering with like thirty. I can't remember thirty different artists from Oregon plus writers. And they're making a book that's going to go into like Powell's and stuff like that. That'll wow. be for kids. And it's a pretty neat thing. But, uh, you know, you know, so we've been working on this, these two kids books for a long time. And basically the story is written. She needs to do the work. <laughs> and it's a lot of work. I mean, the artist, you know, doing like drawings and all that kind of stuff takes time. So we have, she's put together like five or six pages and we only have, 16 or 17 more to go, Mom. Just crank it up. At least it's a children's book, though. It's not like we only have 572 more it, to go. And, like, the thing that I like about the kids' books, that the, the, the one that we're working on is called Jasper's Shadow, and it's about um, a teddy bear that wakes up with no shadow. So he goes and looks for his shadow. Aww. And, like, it's all about helping kids find their voice. I mean, that's the whole intent. <laughs> <laughs> Who writes the stories? I do. Actually, I, I tell the kid. I tell my. I told when my long time. I used to tell my kids stories, so all the time, so that I would and uh, anyone that they liked, I'd flip it in and then write it down. So we have this other one called Dragon's Chocolate about a. Cool. About a how to explain that and summarize it and what's your elevator pitch? A Dragon's <laughs> Chocolate is a community that their laughter has been stolen, and this little kid goes to find it back. Is find there it. chocolate involved? There is, actually. It ends up with this dragon stole it. I'm going to ruin this book entirely. And um, he has been, like, taking all the laughter and putting it in chocolates. What? What? I'm so intrigued. Where can you find these books? You can't. They're not done. Oh, oh. I thought that one Working was Working on Okay. Okay. Uh, will you make videos of them, too? 
I don't know. It depends. Oh, you know, you'd always love to do something like that, but it, whatever. I think that uh, my intention is to make them for my kids and make them for my family, and then anything that flows from that is what flows from that. That's so cool. Yeah. You told me you are a terrible speller. Terrible. Yeah, we. Uh, I saw you at that spelling bee yes. thing, and I was like ultimately impressed. Oh, I, like, there should I didn't win. Third place. <laughs> third. Okay. That's amazing. I, I mean, I've never had third place in anything. <laughs> so, like, yeah. No, I'm a, atrocious. So there'd be if, if they were to eliminate words that I had, if I had to spell it to use it, I could only use like cat, dog, fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're writing children's books. <laughs> I've learned through my career, at least the way that I write is like, you know, that I write emotionally based. So like what emotion, and I don't let bad spelling get in my way. It used to be kind of paralyzing because I'd be like, oh, man, people are going to read this. And I'm like, well, now I just get right through it. And that's what I, that's how I write. Then just fix it later. Yeah. Fix it later. Uh, work with, surround you. Like, a good philosophy is surround, your, surround yourself with people that are more talented than you. I love that philosophy. And then leverage their strengths for your weaknesses. And I think that's a good, good sign of a leader is not afraid to admit their weaknesses. And a good sign of a... Uh, a good team is to be able to fill in and know where their other weaknesses are, you know, and that's just part of it, you know. I mean, that's how I've always, you can't, that's how I've always tried to be a leader of is like, you know, I'm going to design something that's, I'm a talent breath speller, but you're amazing, you know, so together <laughs> we're going to be great, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Has any uh, spelling letters <clears throat> ever made it into a promo? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Really? Oh, but when I was younger, yeah, absolutely. I spelt, misspelt Joe Donlin's name. And, uh, yeah, yeah, Joe D. It has haunted you forever, yeah. I can tell. Yeah, absolutely. That was turning on my boss at me now. We had a huge powwow about that back in the day. <laughs> well, how did you spell it? I don't remember. I just remember I messed up Donlin. <laughs> Glad you didn't mess up Joe, because then we Joe. would have some issues. I messed up Joe. Uh, you like, know. you said you were a bad speller, but just J-O. <laughs> Uh, okay, now we're going to take a couple of questions from the social media sphere. Oh, wow. The first one, I don't think you can answer. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, and it comes from Jeff Thompson, who is, I think, <laughs> sitting behind us, executive producer of the Station Break podcast. He says, who is the most difficult anchor to work with? They're all wonderful. Oh, they're all horrible. <laughs> they're all terrible. <laughs> Save me. <laughs> I'm glad he commented. I shared uh, one of the trampoline promo on my Facebook page, and no one to ask for questions, and no one had asked any on there. People asked them on Twitter, but so Jeff, I think, felt bad and went and wrote one himself. So go to Facebook <laughs> and go leave comments in the future. Okay, next one is from Boaz Frankel, wonderful okay, friend of the show. He says, "What is your favorite sandwich?" Getting uh, real serious wow. and deep here. We had this turkey sandwich that I was shooting over at Vigor the other day where they do industrial stuff, and it came from, like, one of their trucks, because they, and it was amazing. I, I don't remember the name of it, like, where they got it from, but I always wanted to ask them, so a turkey sandwich, I guess. I mean, it's how boring, right? I, turkey sandwich. Know, pretty bland. <laughs> that sounds so great. Uh, Peter wants to know, what are some of the challenges you face when you're creating a promo besides mm. a tight deadline? Writing. Writing is the hardest thing to do. Coming up with a good concept, making sure the concept fits all people involved. Hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. That would be hard if there's a lot of hap a lot of people to make happy. Constantly. And That's whereas with the daily news, like a TV news package, you have to make everybody happy, but then it's out there and it's done. But if you, if it's like, mm -hmm. probably seems like sometimes you have too much time where there's too much time for someone to go, oh, well, let's change that. You still have time before it has to sure. go on air or Absolutely. whatever. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think, you know, like I've always said, if, if, if you're bored of doing whatever you do, everybody else is too. <laughs> so I, that's what, and like, I know that if something's good or that I'm working on, it's because I'm, I'm really interested. Another good sign is like if I'm editing on something and people keep on knocking on my door, mm -hmm. like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, this is good. You know what I mean? That, that those little, I mean, obvious, those are kind of like obvious things, but I've always had that feeling like if you're bored, everybody's bored. But if you're, you know, fascinated or somehow like it sparks something inside you that you hadn't, you know, felt before, then, then I think that is a good sign that you're on the right track. And I tend to follow my gut a lot. When it comes to, even on shoots, I'll just say, you know what, we're doing whatever. Everybody's going to, you know, run around and, you know, we did this thing today with these kids. And I was like, I didn't know what I was doing because I was kind of thrust into it. 
but I'm just like, okay, we're going to shoot this like this. We're going to do this like this. And kids, what do you think? And they just went crazy. <laughs> you know, I was like, fine, follow it. We'll love it, you know, and then, and, and, you know, I'll fix it in post. <laughs> Yeah, how much do you think you shoot compared to, because how long is your normal spot? Uh, 30 seconds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or less than a minute usually? 30 seconds, yep. And you've probably shot... You don't want to know. Kevin, photo I'm trying not to break my photographer. <laughs> we shoot way too much. Uh, I don't know, there's usually like a 10 to 1 ratio, but we probably operate around more like 15 to 1. So for every one shot you use, probably doing 15 uh, takes. They do takes, but we do, I'd probably do it, it, it's probably about 15 to 1 in that area. Sometimes it's a bad day. It's like 30 to 1. <laughs> it's a long day. Do you like that it has to end up being a certain length or? Well, you know, it's funny because we're, we're starting to break into the idea that, you know, social engagement is becoming more um, of a leading point to design content. And that doesn't have any limitations. You can make it whatever you want. And there's best practices. Some people will say, oh, seven seconds, five seconds, whatever it is. Um, there's best practices. But, uh, you know, I, I like having a cutoff because like, you get into making like a three-minute piece. I mean, that's a lot of work on my <laughs> end. <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel where there's no limitations and my videos are all like 10 minutes long. It's like, well, no one's going to stop me. And I have no... I need to get like your gut instincts because that is difficult to figure out what to cut out mm. because when you spend so much time, I'm sure, shooting and coming up with the ideas, it's like each clip is personal to you. Right. Like, I don't want to cut that. I like that. I like that. But right. no mm. one's going to watch all of them. So you got to figure out what yeah. to you cut out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's like cutting off your right arm sometimes, you know, but if it's good for the piece, it's good for the piece. Yeah. And that's hard because like you'll spend hours coming up with this amazing idea and then I'll have a designer come in, Jeff Patterson who works up in design, and he'll be like, that's, that's stupid. And I'll be like, what? Yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> well, he's honest, so you know, that's good. And he's right, so you gotta make the cut, you know? And then all that time that you spent in the field and all that stuff that you did thinking, you know, just gotta let it go. It's part of the game. Oh, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> The last question from the social media sphere is from Greg at Superset Greg, and I, this is another one I don't know if you really have an answer for. He said, why are there still sweeps months and why only two? I, Which I don't know if there are only two. Aren't uh, there I think there's more four? than that, the three or four, right. Uh, I don't know why. That's a great question. I think that, to me, I've always thought that that's a top-down thing. Network still does it, so we'll do it. And sweeps are basically... I don't even fully understand. A right. month where the ratings really matter? This used to be designed so that the, they would do these books uh, that Nielsen Holmes would have, and they'd jot down what they watched. And based on that, they would be able to establish their rating. Based on that rating, they'd be able to establish how much money they can sell that piece for. And they still do it. And no one really, like our sales team does not sell that. They sell on a, I can't remember, like a, every week, a weekly base of numbers. Huh. So we do, though, but we're in the philosophy now as a team that we're in the sweeps all the time. Right. So there's no sweeps month as far as what we traditionally do. But at the same time, NBC still follows those parameters. So we, we follow suit. Like this month, you do see more. And I don't know if they're promos that you're working on or not, no. but more... Uh, story or... Uh, yeah, like story yeah, promotion. Yeah, like right. Maggie Vespa is working on... A uh, big story about Portland's homeless population, right. and so I keep seeing promos pop up of Maggie right. being very serious about Right. <laughs> and they're very good. Yeah. Randy Let's did those. He's amazing. Good talent. Excellent. Okay, now, last right. but not least, we have okay. three would you rather questions that uh -oh. I have come up with. Sweet. Very serious, uh -oh. getting down to business. The first one is would you rather be on camera? No. In. See, that's why they're tough questions. <laughs> in a Coheed and Cambria music video, oh like you're the star of the video, no. or anchor a newscast. Oh, <laughs> each of those are equally painful. <laughs> I'd probably be in the Coheed video because I get to hang out with my cousin. Because, <laughs> like, how's your air guitar? <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> that's why I'm behind the camera. Your cousin would be directing you. <laughs> that would be entertaining. Oh, my gosh, yes. We should do that. Hey. <laughs> What's your cousin's name? Travis. Travis, give us a call. Right. I'm sure you're listening to this podcast during your busy schedule. Uh, would you rather have a promo 
air on TV and have a huge, horrible typo in it. Ooh. Not anything inappropriate, just yeah, something been there. that's very embarrassing. Or have a promo be supposed to airing and it just disappears from the system and it's just, there's no record of it. It didn't air. All of your footage is gone. So would I lose all my footage? Yeah. Or have a promo? Like all your work is gone well, or it's is ruined? Is the footage I lost, was it a good promo? Because <laughs> sometimes I don't want to see it anymore. <laughs> so there's caveats. If it's terrible footage, get rid of it. But if it's great footage, I'll take the spelling error. <laughs> well, like we think that your work is good. It would have to be great footage, right? <laughs> Well, you know, for the most part, sure. Uh, oh, I did not think of a third one. Okay. Okay. Quick, self, think of two things that Skylar would hate to do besides oh, being on camera. Uh, would you rather, in the middle of shooting a promo where people are throwing buckets of water on, or you're sure. throwing buckets of water, have it turn around and have them do that to you in slow motion video, or have, when you're shooting a trampoline promo, Somebody actually does fall off and get hurt. Oh, Probably I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather have people throw water at me. I was really nervous about that. We did this thing when Drew. Remember when Drew came back to the morning? Mm -hmm. This pot spot where he was, people were following him. Like, the, like it started off, people in the community started following him. And my biggest fear was since everybody's volunteering. You know what I mean? It's like someone's gonna fall down, and somehow like the station's gonna be liable. Because we had a lot of people. We had like 30 people, and. That's stressful. I think more about that probably than I do like everything else. Of people not getting hurt. People getting hurt, <laughs> you know, light landing on somebody. I mean, we're insured, so there's parameters for right. for our safety and all that. But you know, we're running across. I can't remember what bridge it was, and one of the roller spoilers fell down, and my stomach just dropped. I was nervous. <sighs> yeah, it was terrible. As long as you're rolling, we're rolling you, know, you can yeah, go we, viral. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> right? Did that's, she fall in the water? <laughs> that happens in my segments all the time. People will be like, "Oh, don't hurt yourself." Well, if you do, you'll just go viral. I'm like, I still would like to avoid right, it. Right. No stitches. Like we did a segment a while ago where I was standing on top of a giant bin of grapes at Southeast Wine Division, oh, and we nice. were right. just on a little plank with two of us. I mean, we're not like ginormous women but there were still two women and they had never had two people stand on the same oh plank goodness. crushing grapes into this thing and we're like what if we just fall in like i'm uh. gonna ruin all your grapes i'm gonna ruin everything i'm gonna hurt myself but it would be very entertaining video <laughs> go viral 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 like that a wine crushing lady that was on the news a long time ago viral yeah, video she started going she yeah. falls she <laughs> lost her breath it was terrible so sad i'm sorry yeah. woman if you're listening <laughs> Well, that is all the questions. Do you have any final wow. words of wisdom about TV promotions or horrible stories or anything people should know about your job? Uh, you know, not really. <laughs> I got nothing. I thought there was going to be something really good there for a second. No. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Check out KGW, I guess, to see all of Skylar's work in the KGW Facebook page. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of commercial rotation, so it's... You know, if you're skipping it, I probably made it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't TiVo our newscast and fast forward because you might miss something beautiful that Skylar did. And it always looks so nice. It's always, you're watching like commercials and blah, blah, blah. And then you see, oh, this is a very nicely shot KGW thing. You can find another episode of the Station Break podcast next Friday that we call Behind the Scenes Friday at KGW. You can find all the episodes on iTunes. Uh, the audio on SoundCloud as well and on YouTube on the KGW News YouTube channel. All the episodes are on there so you can just spend hours and hours of your time if you would like hearing wonderful stories from people like Skylar. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Woohoo.